Let's go to do problem number one, lesson 12. We did say find the critical points of the function. What are the critical points of a function? The critical points are the points where the slope is zero or the slope doesn't exist. Okay, um, the slope is f prime of x equal 4x cubed minus 8x. Uh, it exists for all x, so we need to find when the slope is zero. When f prime of x is zero to find the critical points. So the critical points appear not in this example, it appear when the uh, slope is zero, so it means that it has a tangent a tangent line, a tangent slope, a horizontal slope, sorry. So let's go to write 4x cubed minus 8x equals 0, and let's go to solve. Now we factor, we factor this expression like 4x, that multiply x squared, now I have 4x cubed, minus 2, now I have 8x equals 0. And when this is 0? This is 0 when something happened. Uh, what should happen for this equation to make possible that this is 0? Well, x could be 0. If, f, if x is 0, 4 multiplied by 0, if x is 0, 4 multiplied by 0 will be 0, 0 minus 2 will be minus 2, and minus 2 multiplied by 0 will be 0. And the equation is satisfied. When it will be this equation also 0, when x squared minus 2 equals 0. Or in other words, when x squared equal 2. Or in other words, when x equal plus square root of 2. Or x equal minus square root of 2. So what are the critical points? The critical points are x equal 0, x equal square root of 2, x equal minus square root of 2. And there is no any point where the derivative is infinity doesn't exist. So these are the critical points. And what happened at this point? What happened at x equals 0, at x equal square root of 2, and at x equal minus square root of 2, that the graph have a horizontal slope? Maybe the graph will do like this, maybe, and will have a horizontal slope in the three points. So this is an horizontal slope at x equal square root of 2. This is an horizontal slope at x equal 0. And this is an horizontal slope. The gra graph will have an horizontal slope at x equal plus square root of 2. Let's go to the next problem. Second problem say find the critical points, critical numbers of the function sine square of x plus cosine f a of x. What do we do to find the, the critical points? We find the slope. And later on, we put it the slope equals 0, and we find the point x at which the slope is 0 or is an horizontal line. OK, so h prime of x, h prime of x, is the derivative of sine squared of x. The derivative of sine squared of x is 2 times sine of x cosine of x plus the derivative of cosine of x. The derivative of cosine of x is minus sine of x. So I want to make h prime of x equal 0. Does exist h prime of x in the interval 0 to pi? Yes. Any number that you put it for h prime of x, it will the output will be a number. So 
there is no problem here because the h prime of x is well defined in the interval 0 to pi and in any interval. Uh, so the slope doesn't go to infinity. So we need to find particular point as what the derivative is 0, at what the tangent line have a slope 0 or horizontal slope. What is this point? Well, this point is when 2 sine of x, cosine of x, minus sine of x equals 0. Or in other words, when 2 times sine of x, uh, 2 times sine of x, that multiply, multiply cosine of x minus 1 equals 0. Mm -hmm. So now I have the product of two things. And the product of two things is equal to zero means that, uh, sorry, this is here, minus one half. Now, now it's correct. So I factor in the way of the product of two part two. A multiplied by V is equal to zero if a is equal to 0 and b can be different than 0. Or if b is equal to 0 and a is different than 0. So when this thing is 0, when this equation is 0, this equation is 0 when sine of x is 0 or this part is 0. So sine of x is 0 when x is equal 0 or pi. Mm -hmm. But 0 and pi, 0 is not including on the interval. So the only point that I have to take is x equal pi. x equal pi. And now cosine of x minus 1 half is 0 if cosine of x is 1 half. And what is the angle whose cosine of x is 1 half? As you know, is the x equals 60 degree or pi divided by 3. So pi divided by 3 have um, cosine of pi divided by 3 is 1 half. Um, and positive 1 half. And on this interval, there is another point where the cosine is is uh, is is minus pi divided by three. Minus pi divided by three is on the interval, but I need to 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 put this minus pi divided by three like two pi minus pi divided by three, or in other words, two pi minus pi divided by three equal six pi divided by 3 minus pi divided by 3 or 5 pi divided by 3. Conclusion. The two points that cosine of x minus 1 half is 0 is when cosine of x is 1 half it is when x equal pi divided by 3 and x equal 5 pi divided by 3. And the other point is when x equal pi. So the critical points of this function, the function sine square of x plus cosine of x, is x equal pi divided by 3, x equal 5 pi divided by 2, and x equal pi. What it means is that at these points, there are an horizontal tangent line. An horizontal tangent line will, will have a slope zero. And sorry, here is phi pi divided by three. So it means that a pi divide, this is pi divided by two, this is pi divided by three, uh, one, this is pi, this is 2 pi and this is 5 pi divided by 3, which is 300 degrees. This is 180 degrees, this is 90, this is 60 degrees. 
Okay, and what it say is, it say you have to expect that at five, the pi, the, at pi divided by three, the slope is zero. You don't know if the slope is zero in the positive or in the negative. Uh, what other thing you expect? You expect that at five pi divided by three, there is a slope zero. You don't know if the slope is yet is here, but you can find the value of the function at five pi divided by three, and if it's a negative value, the slope will be this one, will be any of this one. And the other is that the slope at x equal pi is also zero. So the slope will do like this. How the function will do? If I decide that these are the three slopes that make zero, so the function should do like this. Zero slope here, zero slope here, zero slope here. But I don't know yet. I need to find the interval where the function increase, the interval where the function decrease. Okay, the answer is this one, and let's go to the next problem. This problem say find the value of the derivative, find the slope at the point zero zero. The value of the function at the point zero zero is one four, it's clearly one four. But this is not what it's asking, is it say that the function will do like this. At zero zero, the value will be one four. One four is something like this. So what it's asking is, if the function has a slope zero, maybe we'll do like this, or maybe we'll do like this. If the function has a slope one, we'll do like this. If the function has a slope minus one, we'll do like this. So what is the slope at the zero zero? We need to calculate. Let's go to calculate the slope. So the derivative of f respect to the x is the quotient rule. Is the derivative of the numerator 2x multiplied by the denominator x squared plus 4 plus minus, minus the numerator by the derivative of the, numer of the denominator 2x divided by the denominator s squared. So if we do a little bit of algebra, f prime of x, the derivative of f respect to the x will be 2x cubed minus 2x cubed. It will be in the numerator uh, a 4. Do you agree? A, a 4. Let's go to do it. It will be 2x cubed plus 8x minus 2x cubed divided by x squared plus 4 squared. So the f prime of x will be 8x divided by x squared plus 4 squared. What is the slope at the point 0? f prime when x equals 0 is equal 8 multiplied by 0 divided by 0 plus 4 squared. Or in other words, 0 divided by 16. And 0 divided by 16 is 0, so the slope is 0. So it means that if you draw the tangent line of the graph of the function at x equals 0, it will be an horizontal slope. Okay, fine. Problem 4, it says find the value of the derivative of the function 4 minus absolute value of x at the, its relative maximum. The point is... The relative maximum is the point x equals 0, y equals 4. Okay, let's go to graph this function to get uh, the sense of what we are doing. The graph of the function of absolute value of x is when x is negative, let's say minus 1, the absolute value is 1. When x is minus 2, the absolute value is 2. 
when x is 1, the absolute value is 1. When x is 2, the absolute value is 2. So this is the graph of absolute value. But what is the graph of minus the absolute value? Minus the absolute value is the same v, but now is when x equal 2, the absolute value of 2 is 2. But minus the absolute value, it will take the value 2 as a minus 2. So the minus absolute value of x, minus absolute value of x will be this. And 4 times minus the absolute value will take this point and we put it here at 4 units up. So at the end, f of x equal 4 minus the absolute value of x will be this graph. Will be the graph 1, 1, 2, 3, 4. So it will do like this. So this is the graph 4 minus absolute value of x. Okay. Mm -hmm. And now what it say the problem, the problem? Find the value of the derivative of the function f of x for minus x at its relative maximum, 0, 0,4. Oh, yes, at 0, 0,4, there is a relative maximum. This is the maximum value. When x equal minus 1, the absolute value is 4 minus uh, is 3. When x equal 1, the absolute value is 3 also. And when x equal 0, f of x 4 minus the absolute value, 4 minus the absolute value, when x equal 0 will be 4. Okay, it says find the derivative at this point. Well, as you see, this side have derivative plus 1. Is increasing, it's like a rectilinear line with derivative plus 1. This side has derivative the slope minus 1. And at the point x equals 0, it's not defined the slope. Because to the right of the 0 is minus 1. To the left of the 0 is plus 1. And at the point 0, there is no defined value for the derivative. So the answer is find the value of the derivative of the function f of x at this rate. You cannot find the value of the derivative because it doesn't exist. Okay, now let's go to do problem number five. That is say find the absolute extrema. What it means absolute extrema? It means the maximum value of the function. And the maximum value of the function takes place at the critical points. And the critical points takes place when the derivative is zero. So, because this is a polynomial, it always exists the derivative. So what is the derivative of y respect to the x? The derivative of y respect to the x is minus 2x plus 3. And this is zero when minus 2x equal minus 3 of x equal 3 half. When x equal 3 half, there is a maximum, uh, there is a tangent line that is horizontal, there is a critical point, um, is a candidate for the maximum value. Um, let's go to see if there is another maximum value. Let's go to plugging f minus 2. Maybe s minus 2 is bigger than f of 3 half. f of 3 half is minus 3 half square plus 3 times 3 half minus 5. Minus 5. So f of minus 2 will be minus minus 2 square plus 3 multiplied by minus 2 minus 5. And in the other extreme is f of 1. What is f of 1? f of 1 is minus 1 squared plus 3 multiplied by 1 minus 5. And because I don't want to do any calculation, 
we go to GeoGebra and we uh, graph the function minus x squared plus 3x minus 5. If you, plot, if you graph it, the function will look like this. Oh, so at x equal 3 half, 3 half is 1.5, more or less like this, 1.5. It has a horizontal slope because the derivative is zero. It has a horizontal slope. And this point, this critical point, is a critical point where the value on the interval, let's go to see the interval, minus 2, 1, minus 2, 1, yeah, minus 2, 1, but 3 half is out of the interval. So, in this interval, uh, 3 half is not a critical point because it's not inside the interval C A minus 2, minus 2, comma 1. 3 half is out of the interval. So, what is the maximum point? Well, F of minus 2 is equal, let me do the numbers, f of minus 2 is minus 15. So f of minus 2 is here, is minus 15. And f of 1, that is on the, f of 1 that is here, is here, here is 3 half, f of 1 that is here, the value is also negative, but it's a negative number that is bigger than minus 15, and f of minus 1 is minus 3, more or less. So, what is the absolute value? The absolute value is when x equals 1, because it's the biggest value that the function can take, is this one. This one, this one, f of minus 2 is smaller, and f of 1 is 3 half, it's bigger. So this is the maximum value, the absolute extrema on this interval. In conclusion, the absolute extrema, the absolute maximum value is minus 15. Sorry, the absolute maximum value is minus 3 and it occurs with x equal 1. And the minimum absolute value is minus 15 and it occurs when x equal minus 2 and the problem is solved let's go to the next one okay now uh, we do the same problem and we know that we need to take care of the interval the interval is minus 1 comma 2 and the function is x cubed minus 3 half x squared. So how we will find the absolute extrema? We will find the critical points and we will compare uh, the value of the function in um, f of minus 1 and f of 2 on the extrema to see which one is the absolute extrema, the maximum absolute value and the minimum absolute value. So let's go to do it. First things, we do the derivative. The derivative of prime of x is 3x squared minus 2, 2, cancel 3x. This can be written like 3x that multiply x minus 1. And I want to find the critical points by plugging the equation 0 and finding the point where the slope is 0. And this occurs when x equals 0 or x equals 1. Is 0 inside this interval 1 min minus 1 comma 2? Yes. Is 1 inside this interval? Yes. Who is the extrema? Who is the absolute extrema? Maybe this is a relative extrema, a relative maximum. Maybe or relative minimum. How we will solve this question? Well, we evaluate the function at the critical points 0, 1, and at the extrema, minus 1, and 
f of 2. So if we evaluate f of 0, will be 0. f of 1 will be 1 minus 3 half. 1 minus 3 half is minus 1 half. Minus 1 half. And if we evaluate at the point minus 1, it will be minus 1 cube, which is negative 1, minus 3 half. E minus 1 cube minus 3 half is minus 5 half. Minus 5 half. And if we evaluate f of 2, it will be 2 cube minus 3 half, 2 squared. And this is 2. This is 2. 2 cube minus 3 half 2 squared is 2. So, what is the maximum value on this interval? From which value you would choose the absolute value, the maximum absolute value here? This is the absolute value, maximum value. What is the absolute minimum value here? Minus 5 divided by 2. So, the question is solved. So when x equal minus 1, f of minus 1 is minus 5 half, and I have an absolute minimum value of the function. And when x equal to f of 2 equal 2, and this is the biggest value that the function achieve. So we have a absolute maximum value. One thing that could help a lot is to graph the function. If you graph the function, you will find this result. You can do it in GeoGebra. Okay, let's go to do this problem. It says, find the absolute extrema of the function. 3 minus absolute value of t minus 3. So, we, we know that the function 3 minus absolute value of t minus 3 can be plotted like this. This is 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. When it's 3, when it's 3, the value will be, when t is 3, this is t. When t is 3, 3 minus 3 is 0, absolute value of 3, 3 minus the absolute value is 3. When it's 2, is 2. When it's 4, is 2. When it's 5, is 1. When it's 5, 5 minus 3 is 2. Absolute value of 2 is 2, 3 minus 2 is 1. And when is 1, is 1. And when is 0, is 0. And when is minus 1, the value is, is when t is minus 1, minus 1, minus 3 is minus 4, minus 4, absolute value of minus 4 is 4, 3 minus 4 is minus 1. So, it is clear that the function does like this. And later on does like this. So, how we will find the absolute extrema of the function? Well, we look for the critical points. Which is the critical point? The critical point is the points where the derivative is zero, no point here, the derivative is zero, or the derivative doesn't exist. So at x equal three, the derivative doesn't exist because to the right of three, the slope is plus one. To the, to the left of three, the slope is plus one. To the right of three, the slope is minus 1. Um, at 3, the slope doesn't exist. So this is the critical point. So what we have to do is to evaluate f of 3, and f of 3 is 3, and to evaluate at the extreme, the interval, uh, the interval is minus 1, comma 5. So f of minus 1 
is minus one and f of five is one. So from these candidates, which one is the absolute extrema? Well, this one is the absolute extrema, so it happened at x equal three, and the value, and the value is three. F of three is three. And the other extrema, uh, absolute extrema, happens to be when x equal minus one. When x equal minus one, the value of the function is minus one. So these are the two extrema. f of three equal three. So the absolute va the value of the extrema are three and minus one. Three for the maximum absolute value, minus one for the minimum absolute value. This minus one, this value. Okay, problem eight say find the absolute extrema of the function a 3x to the 2 thirds minus 2x on the interval minus 1, 1. So how we find the absolute value of the extrema? Look for the critical points. How we look for the critical points? The critical points are the point where the derivative is zero or the derivative doesn't exist. Well, here is a polynomial and on this interval, the derivative may not exist, may not exist. Let's go to find the derivative. The derivative of y respect to the x is 2 thirds multiplied by 3. It will cancel x 2 thirds minus 1, which is minus 1 third, minus the derivative of 2x, which is 2. So this is 2 divided by, by x 1 third minus 2. Or, if you prefer, 2 that multiply 1 divided by x 1 third minus 1. Or, if you prefer, equal 2 that multiply 1 minus x 1 third divided by x 1 third. You know, when x is 0, the cubic root of 0 is 0, so at x equals 0 is a critical point because the derivative doesn't exist. So x equals 0 is a critical point. x equals 0 is a critical point because the derivative f prime of x doesn't exist at x equals 0, which is another point where the a slope is zero. So the critical points are, are the points where the derivative is zero, where the derivative is zero, when the derivative, oh, it doesn't exist. This point means that the derivative does not exist, does not exist. And now the other point is when the derivative is zero. And when the derivative is zero is when one minus one, one third is zero, it means that x one third is zero, it means that x sorry, x one third is one, it means that x equal one. So when x equal one and x equal zero, these are the critical points. Now what we have to do? We evaluate the function f of x, the function f of x is the function three x to third minus two x, three x to third minus 2x, we evaluate at the critical point, f of 0, f of 1, and at the extrema, at the, at the, inter, at the, the point a, b in the interval, f of minus 1 and f of 1. f of minus 1 and f of 1 and f of 1. Okay, if we evaluate this function at this point, we will have. What is f of 0? f of 0 should be 0. What is f of 1? f of 1 is 3 minus 2 is 1. What is f of minus 1? 
f of minus 1 is, is 3 times s cubic root of minus 1 squared minus 2 times minus 1. And this is 3 times minus 1 squared is 1, cubic root of 1 is 1, so 3 by 1 is 1 plus 2. So it's 5. Mm. Now we plug in f of 1. For x equal 1, it will be 3, a 1 cubic root of 1 squared, which is 1 minus 2 multiplied by 1, and this is 1. So the value that we have is the 0, the 1, the 5, and the 1. Who is the winner? The winner is the 5. So this is the absolute extrema. And when it happens, when x equals minus 1. Who is the other winner, the other extrema, the absolute maximum extrema is the 5. What is the minimum extrema? The minimum absolute extrema. Uh, the minimum value is this one, 0. And when it happens, it happens when x equals 0. So these are the two extrema of the function. Uh, the, the function achieve 5 when x equals minus 1 and achieve the minimum possible value 0 when x equals 0. And this is the result. Then the maximum value, let's go to write it, the maximum value maximum value of the function is 5 and happens when x equals minus 1. And the minimum value of the function The minimum value is 0. 0 is the minimum value. And it happens, minimum value is 0, and happens when x equals 0. So these are the two minimum values. The maximum value is 5, the minimum value is 0 question is this one. Is true or false? The maximum value of a function that is continuous on a closed interval can occur at two different values in the interval. Yes, why not? Let's go to make an example that this of a continuous function that, uh, that is continuous and let's go to choose the sign of x. Sine of x does like this, does like this, and this is the zero, this is pi divided by two, this is pi, this is three pi divided by two, this is two pi, uh, this is three pi, and this is four pi. Well, on the interval zero, four pi, I see that the maximum value occurs two times. It occurred at x equal pi, and it occurred here at x equal, which point is this one? This point is 2 pi plus pi divided by 2, or 4 pi divided by 2 plus pi divided by 2, or 5 pi divided by 2. 5 pi divided by 2, this is the point. So, on the close interval 0, 4 pi, there are two maximum values that in this case the maximum value are the same. But I can find another example where the accident, when the value are not the same, of course. Uh, so, this the answer is, is true, it can happen, that you can have on a closed interval for a continuous function, you can have two 
different maximums value. Okay.